Connor Bell is with us. Now get this, this is just brilliant. Um, twice in a very short time, you broke the New Zealand dis- dis- discus record and then you did it again within 35 days. So after competing in Christchurch, you go to Melbourne and you do it again. Congratulations, mate. I mean, you're, you're on absolute red hot form. Yeah, cheers for that. Um, you know, it's always cool to be throwing really big distances at this time of the year. It's 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 not quite the business end of the year for the international um, competitors. So really confidence boosting, um, going out and, and having some big chucks. Also really good to get out of the country and, and travel around a bit, get some international competition. So yeah, really thrilled with my results. Nine centimetres uh, on a discus throw. That sounds like a hell of a lot, is it? Pardon? Is no, nine sixty six? Yeah, sixty six. But 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 throwing an extra nine is that is that is that quite a, quite a lot at a time? Uh, extra nine centimeters on on my old record. Uh, to be fair, it's 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 not it's not actually a, a lot. Um, but I'm I'm also not in super like competition ready shape if you get what I mean. So so we're we're sort of still very much focused on training and preparing for the international season and, and to be throwing a bit further later on in the year. I think it's also really cool for my consistency to be throwing lots around that distance, but um, in terms of a nine centimetre improvement in 35 days, it's not a lot, but it's it's still really promising for this time of the year. So at the moment, what you're doing is when you're, uh, you're entering these competitions, it's just what, to get your rhythm right, to get your timing right, to get your feel right, feet on the track, you've got the noise people around you, just, is, is, that, is that what's equally important to you? Yeah, I think you know it, it's it's a bit of that, and it, it, it's it's also you know the way um, in the athletics we qualify for those major events. They have this points system, so um, different competitions give different points, and and part of the build up to a major event is to try and go to these competitions and perform really well to accumulate points. Um, and if your points are high enough, you get selected to go to these um, major events. So for me, it's a bit about getting into the rhythm of things, getting exposed to some international competitors, throwing really far into some great conditions and getting into the swing of competing. You know, and beating uh, Denny in Melbourne, I mean, six in the world champs, he won the Commonwealth Games gold. So just the head-to-head competition, that must feel good to put a, a guy like that away. Yeah, look, Matt, uh, Matt, Denny, and I are really good mates. Um, we we always have a great, great sort of yarn when we're over uh, competing together, and it was really cool to be able to go over there and, and give him a real challenge. And and you know, Matt Denny's the kind of guy that'll that'll take that on board, be really annoyed at it, and and come back stronger. And I think having two guys at the bottom of the world, two country guys at the bottom of the world, to to sort of have a bit of a rivalry is going to be really good for both of our development, and ultimately, um, we'll both end up throwing really far. Budapest. Now, look, we had um, we had Rosie on, um, Rosie Elliott on yesterday, and we're talking about Budapest and what she has to do to get to Budapest. I mean, but that's if she wants to run the two hundred meters. Was actually improving by point two, but obviously the four hundred's her thing. You've got to get up to the sixty-seven meter mark. So, what's it going to take to reach that? And do you have a target in mind of yes, I want to achieve it by X date or X month? Uh, look, it's for me. You know, it's really is a bit of a patience game um, with the weather conditions. I, I haven't had. Um, like the like, I haven't had great conditions for discus throwing. I've had a couple of good con- good conditions for throwing the discus, but it really is. I'm, I'm at the mercy of the elements, and it's just a waiting game. So as soon as the wind, you know, that 67 opens up and it becomes a real possibility, um, it's just about getting being exposed to those meets. And so that's what we'll be aiming to do over the next little while. I think it'll come. Uh, it's just a matter of when and where. Connor Bell, who's our national discus throwing champion and just set two records in 35 days. Just when you're saying that, here's stupid of me. I was thinking, well, go inside and train. Oh, hang on a second. You need a 100-metre bloody indoor arena to do this, don't you? I, yeah. I mean, where's the facility that you can actually do that? Or do you, when you train inside, you, is it kind of like American football taking, you know, those PATs and things that you basically just, you've got a big net in front of you that you're throwing into? Yeah, so, you know, there are a couple of facilities around the world that can actually host an indoor discus throwing meet. There are a couple in the US and there are a couple in Europe, uh, but they're few and far between. They're not, they're not a common thing because obviously you need an awful lot of space to throw a discus. Um, at, in, on the shore, we have an indoor throwing ring and we're essentially just throwing into a net. So spinning around in a net. Okay, brilliant. All right, okay, I can understand that. Why the discus, Connor? I know you've probably been asked this before. I'll ask it again. Why the discus, bro? Um, well, so intermediate school, um, I you know, had a had a rough time coming from a small country school, going to a big uh, middle school. I went to North Cross from, uh, you know, it was a school of about a thousand kids, and I came from a school of about sixty. Right. 
Um, and, and, you know, I didn't really have my thing. I got a bit of a hard time. And at the end of middle school, I picked up the discus and I was pretty good at it. And I think that was sort of the, the thing that, you know, that was about me. And so I, I held on to it and, 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 you know, I loved it. And I, I spent all this time researching it. And, you know, my dad would tell me stories about his granddad, who was an athlete, a top level athlete. Um, and, and sort of it just sort of stoked the fire and I got really into it and I did really well and it sort of just it took off and, and I've been loving it. Do you sleep with that thing, mate? I mean, you must love it. You must know every little inch of it. When you pick it up, do you know that it's different from that other one down there? I was watching Tim Southey do this with pink cricket balls before the first test in Tauranga. He had a box of them, mate. He had nine. He'd pick one up and go, no, that's not the right one. It's like he's picking apples. Do you, is, it, is it like that with your discus? Are they, are they yeah. that? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Brilliant. I, like, I, hope, yeah, it is. I was it hoping is. you'd say that, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, discus, yeah, there are so many different kinds of discuses, and there's uh, discuses with different rim weights, there's different discuses where the rims are made of different alloys, um, the different faceplate materials, they're all different, they have a different feel. Um, the other thing is, because in you know, discus we, we use chalk to help with our grip, and chalk interfaces with disc, different discuses differently, and so all of those little things create this, this sort of feeling that it's hard to describe but you know I've got maybe 60 discuses at home and, and most of them would feel very different from each other so yeah it is it is it is very similar to that in that um, you know there's a there's a unique uniqueness associated with different discus. But at the same time the consistency for competition has to be what uh, size I'm talking diameter and weight are those the two things and I suppose width as well is it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so there are a few parameters that, that need to be um, sort of in check for a discus to be legal to throw in a competition. Um, and it's essentially the dimensions of the discus. Uh, it has to be a certain thickness, a certain size, and it has to obviously be a certain weight. More power to you, mate. That's, I mean, more power to you. I, do, I, you know, I love it. When you when you've throw a throw like you've thrown, and you, you know, you, you throw that big sixty six something, or rather, when your feet are in that position and you're spinning and your body's and you're released, do you know exactly at that time? Wow, that's a goodie. Yeah, you know, every now and then you'll get a throw that surprises you. I know my first national record down in Hastings. Um, you know about a month ago now um it, it it didn't feel like the most but you know my throw in melbourne on the other hand it sort of it felt really powerful snappy and really fast and i knew it was a good one um as soon as it came out of my hand so you know you get those throws that surprise you but then you know another breath sometimes you hit it just right and you know that it's going to be a big one all the very best. Uh, train hard, um, you know, throw throw longer. And we'll keep in touch all the way through to the World Champs and beyond, mate. Um, just very, very proud of what you've done so far this year, considering that, you know, we haven't even hit March yet. So just keep going hard. Yeah, we'll do. Thanks.